This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to show you through this uh, Sunset Trail Model 210 FK 2018. I'm on the door side walking towards the rear. All right. So you have a, a um, swing out grill rack here and down here, hopefully you can see it, that is the quick connect for the LP hose to connect the grill to your LP system. All righty. You have outside uh, kitchen with a refrigerator and a cooktop that pulls out. Now this cooktop also has, if you can see down there, there's another quick connect line that you'll have to connect right there, all right, to get gas to your cooktop. Outside speakers, power outing with a light strip, LED light strip, uh, power and antenna out if you want to put a TV out here. That's just a service panel for your refrigerator. All right, you have your grill in here. Um, this, uh, that blue coiled hose is for a sprayer that you, got, you have a spray port on it. You have your 30 foot, 30 amp cord. You have a um, stabilizer jacks on each corner all right two LP tanks a deep cycle marine battery here this is a part of your hitch here we'll explain that to you when you pick up your trailer that port right there is just in case you want to use a uh, solar panel to charge the battery that's a that particular one is a Furion brand all right open this up this is your hitch it's a husky center line weight distribution hitch with built-in sway so uh, we'll show you how that it operates when you get here, but you can always refer back to their website and follow the links to their hookup video if you get yourself into trouble or you just can't remember a few things. Okay, so as we go here, let's see what we got. Satellite and cable through. All right, you have uh, your city water connection right here that's normally how the normal way to get water to your trailer now if you happen to go to a, a camp uh, site that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite you can fill your water ahead of time right and uh, you can pump the water right from your fresh water tank so you would fill it right there also this is a black tank flush so let's go over here These are your dump valves right here. Okay, so there's the gray. Let me get down here so I can see. There's your gray tank there. And let's see where the other one is here. And these are your black levers or, or black tank pulls here. So you got a black tank and a gray tank here. So the bottom line is you'll put your hose on here obviously. You'll pull out the valve or the the gate valves in order to, to uh, dump them. Okay, let me get my head going here. You'll pull you'll pull on the gate valves to dump the tank. So you're going to dump your black tank first. Your black tank is for toilet water and waste, and your gray tank holds sink and shower water. So you're going to dump the black first, just because it's dirtier water than the gray. You dump the gray second, and. Uh, it just helps to clean out the hose a little bit because it's dirty water but not as dirty as the black tank water so if we go back here to where we were just at this here is the black tank flush so if you leave the black tank valve open hook your hose on here and turn it on it'll spray the inside of your black tank and clean it out even better all right so that's a, it's a good thing to have also your uh, water heater the switch is operated inside. Right now it's drained. You can see the plug is out. This is the plug right here. Okay. All right, so you never use this unless there's water in the tank. So you always have to make sure that you have water in the tank before you turn it on. Otherwise you can damage it. Also another thing you need to know and be careful of, when you put your awning out, you can see where the awning arm is compared to the door. So you gotta have your door out on a 90 degree angle from the, the wall of the trailer so you don't hit it with the awning arm when it's being extended. All right, so we get here. 
the awning extend, I'll just show you a bit here, it just goes out like that. You'll send it out eight feet until you can see the awning tube, and then you know you're all the way out. Now, I'll never leave this awning out unattended because um, you it can get, get, get damaged by the wind very quickly. Uh, so you always roll it in when you're not at the campsite. Also, these are your levels here. Your battery's charged. Your fresh water tank is empty. You can see it'll graduate up in one third increments as it fills. Black tank is empty. Gray tank is empty. So on and so forth. Um, to turn your water heater on electric, always make sure there's water in the tank first. You turn it on that way. To light it on gas, you'll do it right there. And the water pump I told you about, if you... Uh, if you, you fill your fresh water tank and you need to pump your own water, you'll turn it on right there. That's also used to winterize the trailer. All right, so the other thing we have here is, uh, is your slide out, out. So we'll push it, and out it goes. And there you have it. So obviously this table you can pull the poles out of the bottom and drop the top down onto the cleats down there and then fill the spacing with the cushions. You can turn that into a bed. All right. Your refrigerator is just a, it's a Norcold gas absorbs the refrigerator so it'll run on electricity or or uh, net or LP gas. So we'll turn it on. You just select the mode. That's right there is for gas. That is auto. That is just electric. That's gas. The reason they call it auto is that's the one you'll normally use because it'll automatically search for electricity. If it can't find it, it'll switch to gas. Or if you're using electricity and you have a power outage, uh, it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil the food. But that's basically all there is to it. It's very simple to operate. You hold this button for a minute to shut it off. That's all there is to it. It takes longer to reach operating temperature than a regular refrigerator, so you got to start it out. Preferably the day ahead of time, but at least eight or t eight, ten, twelve hours ahead of time to get it to, to operating temperature. All right, your uh, you play CDs and DVDs here. Obviously, um, you can stream off this USB, so you can take your favorite albums with you, put them on a on a USB drive, and take them all with you. Um, you can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth, so you can uh, play your MP3s from your phone or or stream video whatever you want to do you have two zones for the speakers one is inside two is outside so there's a lot you can do with it it's uh it's excellent for camping you can uh, use it on rainy days or late nights or wherever you want you got a swing out bracket here obviously all right your thermostat is very simple you just light it up by pushing the mode button then you're just going to scroll through it fan that's the air conditioner running without the compressor uh, Air conditioner on auto, high auto. You always want to run it on auto if you can. Heat and then off. Just remember there's a lag time every time you, if you select the air conditioner, it's going to take a good five seconds or so to, uh, to um, turn on or off for that matter. Now the toilet, uh, you just have to remember that you can't use it dry or without chemicals. So when you get to the campground, you're all hooked up. You're going to dump your chemical right in there. You're going to step on the flush pedal. And you're going to put about a gallon or two of water in there. There's no way to tell exactly what that is. You just sort of have to use a little common sense and and uh, and uh, make sure that it's uh, uh, there is some water in it and the chemical. That's important. You can't use it dry. The range. You just spark it to light it. So I turn on the valve there. I'm going to. Spark I don't know if the gas is on or not. We'll see in a minute. Yeah, it is. So you turn this clockwise to spark it. For the oven, down here at the bottom sh shelf, below the shelf, is a way back there is a pilot light. So you need a grill lighter with a long neck. You basically put this to pilot. You depress it. You hold it in. You light the pilot light down there with your lighter. After it lights, you're still holding this in. You hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds. Go to whatever operating temperature you want. It'll cycle through like a normal oven, of course. Then when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time. All right. So this down here is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like that. 
If it goes off, it's telling you that there's a carbon monoxide leak or an LP buildup. So you, you get everybody out of the trailer. You go up front, you shut off your uh, gas at the front and figure out what's going on. This is the power converter here. It converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So you can see you got regular AC power on this side. And with regular household circuit breakers, they're all labeled. Then on this side, you've got uh, 12 volt uh, fuses. So that's that's uh, the AC power is converted down to 12 volts here, or over to 12 volts. And now you, if these actually, if they ever blow the fuses, you can see them glowing through this tinted plastic. So you know that it's that's what's happened. Also, this is a battery charger, so as long as you're plugged in, it'll keep your battery charged up front. Okay. And the bedroom is is. You can you can lift up the bed and there's a little bit of storage underneath like a foot locker and you have a, over there You can hang a TV bracket and it has cable or, or antenna hook up a coax hook up anyway and power Okay So that's basically it um, So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer from National RV Detroit now one last thing You have to go up and inspect your roof at least three times a season you can walk on the roof no problem, but you'll go up there and you'll look at all the seals on the roof, all the sealant on the roof. And uh, you just look for separation and cracking. The reason you're inspecting it just so you can, if it ever needs or when it needs touch up, because all roofs eventually do, you're just inspecting it so you're just going to look at it. And sometime when you're up there, it could be years from now, you just don't know. That's why you inspect it. You'll see that it needs to be touched up in, a, in an area and you get that taken care of immediately. So you have to inspect your roof. Figure once in the spring, once in the fall, and once in the middle of the summer. Um, do that every year. Also, when you winterize this trailer, you can't get antifreeze into the, into the water heater, so that there's bypass valves on the back of the water heater, and you're going to have to bypass it before you pump antifreeze in. That's If you don't know that, or you're either going to have it done or learn to do it yourself, so uh, keep in mind you have to bypass the water heater. So, Okay, well, thank you for purchasing your trailer from National RV Detroit, and goodbye.